Hello. Um, my hair sucks. It's COVID. I can't get a proper haircut. First world problems. Okay, so I want to shoot a video. Um, about where I'm at. Um, I guess an update on the Mictal video, people. Um, I haven't done one in a while. Um, <clears throat> medication for me never, never cured. And, and I think there, there's maybe people, I, I've said it in other videos, but people might not know exactly what my situation is because uh, this channel started off as like sort of like a, a benzo, sort of like not bashing channel, but um, like, you know, hey, you know, I'm free of benzos kind of thing. I was excited about that because I was really scared that benzos may have destroyed me. And um, there's a lot of misinformation out there in that regard. It wasn't benzos. That was what I figured out. Um, so, <clears throat> anyway, but I was off benzos for years. And uh, for six years. Um, I don't I don't drink, uh, I don't smoke, I, I exercise regularly and all that stuff. Um, but I've had a serious, uh, series of nervous sort of breakdowns um, due to stressful life events, uh, such as probably many of you can relate to um, loss of a loved one, and, uh, and certain people are able to cope and uh, handle things better than others. I have been suffering with mental illness for quite some time, and um, the Lamictal was the first time since I had got sober. And the irony was, and this isn't this isn't to deter you from getting sober, uh, but like my father, you know, who got sober, he's been clean for 29 years or something. He, you know, the people I talk to that got sober, it's, oh, they, you know, they get the clarity, you know, whether it's drugs, right? I mean, I've met a lot of people that were on, on high doses of benzos, high doses of multiple benzos, high doses, they were taking benzos with uppers, downers, getting drunk, I mean, they were abusing it, you know, I took a very low dose, one milligram a day, and I was using it you know just to function survive I didn't feel high I didn't feel tired you know I just felt normal I was able to go from you know my story is a long one and uh, there's a lot of videos on here and but the nuts and bolts of it was I was extremely functional overly functional overly analytical working full-time two jobs going to college all the motivation and aspiration of a hundred people and nothing could stop me nothing could ever stop me nothing could ever slow me down from achieving what I wanted to achieve which in the back of my head was built was money it was all about money and how much money I would be able to get and that would solve my problems because that was what was ingrained in me and, you know at, a, at an early age um, growing up poor and, and living in various precarious situations in, in which there was abuse. I won't go into details of that, but um, there was never any stability and there was a lot of crying and there was a lot of fear and, and it mostly was due to lack of money, lack of money, lack of money. So I had this, I didn't care what I did, I just wanted to be rich. And, you know, so, um, but all those things that I ended up, you know, trying to achieve and, um, and nothing could stop me. And, but then it did. And then, then I had my first panic attack on my way back to college. And it was right after I graduated college. And the irony for me and, and the doctors, you know, because I, I just dealt with it. I was like, oh, I, you know, you didn't mess with me. I don't care who you are, you know? Panic attack, what? You don't mess with me, I'm, I'm unstoppable. But, um, but I wasn't. And 
and I fought through it, and I fought through it, you know, and I had never really, I never, I didn't know what a benzo was, I didn't know what medication was, um, obviously I had been self-medicating, I was, I was a smoker, I was a drinker, I was a partier, uh, you know, when I wasn't at work or school, and, um, you know, but I felt fine, you know, fine, I mean, I, I definitely had social anxiety when I wasn't drinking, but drinking was like, my, it was a miracle, it was my favorite thing in the world, it made me present, it made me not think about all the problems, issues, past, future, all that shit that we get stuck on, so, I, I, you know, um, ended up having a panic attack, and it was actually when I had graduated, and I had a really good job, and everything was going going well, I had a panic attack, which was soon quickly followed by one of the worst, uh, biological, physical, autoimmune conditions that I, you know, so I just went from hell to hell, but in the period, about a week and a half, two weeks between my first panic attack and when the interstitial cystitis started, um, I became, I went from being able to get into a car and drive to Texas, zero anxiety, driving was my thing, I had plenty of energy and all that stuff, I was always so insecure though about everything, um, I could have a zit and I, w I would pop it and then like it would be really bad and I wouldn't want to go to work you know even though most of the kids had it 10 times worse at college than I did I was just so hyper vigilant and self-aware and insecure about myself anyway even though I did well I mean I did I did well with, with the ladies and such so I was always very insecure about myself um anyway I ended up having the panic attacks, it got so bad, I went from being this unstoppable force to not being able to leave my bedroom, and I didn't know why, I was waking up with like, you know, rolling panic attacks, I was waking up, um, not knowing what to do, and my first, my first panic attack, you know, was on the road, and I called 911, I couldn't breathe, I, I nearly, I thought I was dying, for sure, um, but anyway, so to make a short story long, I ended up, um, eventually, because I couldn't even leave my bedroom, I didn't know what was going on, I didn't have any money, and my whole life had just upended, I went to see a doctor, you know, a psychiatrist that was really cheap, and, you know, he was, he was like, here, you know, here's a, here's a benzo, here's some Xanax, take it, you know, when you need it, and I, so I ended up, I was trying to push myself to go out. I still was trying to figure out what the hell this was. And uh, one day during a panic attack, I you know popped it a 0.25, and oh my god, did I just feel better, better than maybe I ever felt? Not high or anything like that. And I just felt normal. I mean, it went from you know panic attacks for weeks to feeling completely normal. I mean, it was just unbelievable. So. I don't, I don't, I don't even know, I didn't keep track or count, I, I, don't, I don't know, I didn't take them every day, especially in the beginning, but, um, but then I came down with my, my, my disease of, I hope you're taking the right exit, um, of the bladder, and then that lasted for 14 months of pure hell, and then, that and started, you know, <laughs> started this, this combination, this culmination of a perfect storm of, of physical and mental health. But, the, you know, after I overcame the first cycle of that and the pain went away, um, I got a job working, you know, within the government. Well, sorry, I'm trying to go to Panera. I've been ordering a lot of, like Uber Eats and they don't have Panera. And, anyway, I'm trying to eat healthy salads. So. Uh, yeah, so I um, ended up 
doing really well. I, I met, you know, my now wife then, and uh, I was I was in a in a remission at the time, and I had no anxiety, and I got on a plane and I flew to Alaska. You know, just whatever. And I flew to Alaska, I did, and traveled up and down up in Alaska for a couple of weeks, and, and I just. I, and I, I was flying all over the place. I started having a lot of physical health issues at the time, and um, from stomach stuff to post nasal dripping, it was constant, just a, a myriad of just problems. Just, just you know, were uncomfortable, uh, chronic nausea. I mean, oh my god, like just I'm 25 at the time, just falling apart. 24, 25, just one thing after another. I just sort of never can, you know. But anyway. Ended up resolving a lot of it with a lifestyle change, and then realizing a lot of it was worsened or caused by um, anxiety. Where the hell is this place? Oh, goodness gracious. Um, <clears throat> you know, so as I'm, I'm learning all those things. I've learned a lot over the years, and, uh, anyways, so, I haven't had a panic attack in, like, ten years, and, uh, the six years I was off Benzos, I didn't have a panic attack, but, um, I'm not a medication, I'm not into medication, I don't like it, I think it should be last resort, and it should only be reserved for people that are really unable to function, and it can help, um, because I would be dead without it. And when I got off of it, you know, I was obsessed with this idea that, uh, I mean, I don't know. I'm going in a circle right now, like in an apartment complex, and it says there's a Panera Bread here. So, I'm not sure. I mean, there's some like construction. Are they building it? I don't know. This is where I ordered it from. Very bizarre. Oh, my apologies. My apologies. Um. So I've been through a lot, and uh, anyway, back to so the lamictal was when I was like medication free after benzos and stuff, and I had overcome OCD. I had overcome. A lot of mental health challenges through reading books. Um, I was dealing with a lot of still psychosomatic and, and not psycho, you know, psychosomatic in the sense it was very real. I had burning skin sensations, all kinds of crap. It was just an oversensitized, uh, sensitized nervous system, derealization, depersonalization. I don't like to say that shit. But I had all that stuff, and um, I was angry all the time. I was, I was uh, just, I turned my fear into anger. I was irritable, I was impatient, and just, so, you know, I had developed a severe case of complex PTSD, still have that, and, um, and, um, sorry, I'm, like, looking for this place, and it's just not in the right location, okay, um, but yeah, so eventually I had to just decide, should I... Should I get on um, meds? And it was either really death at that point. I was gonna lose my wife. I was gonna lose everything. Or, or try something. And I did a lot of research, and I found the Lamictal, and I decided to to take that on and, and, and check that out. Hold up. One second here. Why don't you move your shit up? Sorry, talk. I called in a, or I did an app order for okay, Kat what was your name? Katrina. Can they want to hire someone for you? Sure. What was the order? Katrina with a C, I think. Okay, just so you know, I think the Google Maps, it, it took me into, like, the circle. I was lost. But anyway, I found you. Just so you know. I think the address is wrong on Google. Okay, I'll, I'll see if I can fix it. I'm sorry. 
I don't, well, yeah. Okay, thanks. Is the last thing for your order Martin? Yes. Thank you. Gosh. Oh, this COVID. The COVID shit. Like, I used to not be able to go into stores, and I've been, like, really trying to go into stores and stuff, and now I can't even go in. But anyway, um, so, Lamictal, I took it, and it brought a sense of clarity a sense of calm a sense of normalcy that I hadn't I didn't have for many years and uh, it made me more patient it made me a better husband it made me a better person um, it allowed me to find God it allowed me to get through the hardest time in my life which was loss of my grandmother I really had never felt really better I hadn't I had not felt that good I took gabapentin for a while that stuff just made me feel kind of drunk. I was able to function on that stuff and drive for Uber and kind of like just go through the motions. But Lamecta was different. It just it made me normal. And and psychiatrists used to say, well, maybe you are normal. I, okay, I know what normal is. I hate when they ask that question. No, 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 no. Um, but I have a lot of techniques and stuff that like I applied and, and, and things, but the Lamictal ended up just wasn't enough to deal with the loss and a move and the loss of my job and just so many things that happened at once. And um, I spiraled and had a complete meltdown, burnout, and um, I couldn't even move or function or read or watch TV. It was scary. It was so scary. I mean, I'm talking, I could not do anything. And, um, I, it was like, I was, I was disappeared. It was so unreal and scary. But, so I came off everything at that time. I was like, whatever, the meds aren't doing anything. And, um, I wouldn't say I got worse at all, actually. I didn't have any, like, um, I, I don't know if I could get worse. Hi, how you doing? Thank you very much. Okay. You too. You know, I don't think that I, I, I really could get worse, you know, at that point. And, um, man, I'm not going to know how to get home. Am I going to use this? Um, but I guess I'll just drive around, see if I can find my home. Um, you know, and this is the worst video ever with all the you knows and da 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 and I'm trying to drive and I'm not it's just I have no idea where I'm at okay so I'm, I'm going to a new place and I didn't know where I was so I'm sorry that I'm so scattered right now I just wanted to let you know that Limic was amazing and I got off of everything I didn't have any side effects actually I cold turkeyed all that crap um, I was on a low dose gabapentin too and I cold turkeyed it all and I then I tried the herbs and everything, and I didn't have, I didn't feel any worse at all. Like I had no additional symptoms. I didn't sleep, you know, any worse than I was. I, I nothing, you know, I had no, uh, you know, increase in in symptoms uh, or whatever. So that was good. But uh, I tried, and then that was like, okay, well, I have an opportunity now. I can try the theanine and all the the ashwagandha again and then you know and some days I felt like maybe I'm making some progress but mostly I was falling apart and I got to a point where it was even worse than the first time even with the first time when I, I broke down I was still functioning a little bit and um, I wasn't having panic attacks I don't even think my body was capable of having panic attacks I'm not really sure bottom line was it was just I was dead inside I, I don't I didn't know what to call it the, the, the endocrinologist thought I had an adrenal tumor my cortisol levels were like 20 times the the human reference range I was trying all kinds of stuff you know to, to get better to different doctors and they want to put me on all these meds and uh, trials of antipsychotics and stuff like that and I was just like oh my god I couldn't even write my own name on paperwork couldn't even write my own damn name and uh, and just a few months before I had been feeling great and it was because I hadn't processed all the, the, the death of my grams and everything and all that um, but then I 
texting my psychiatrist because you know I'm not a risk or anything. It had been six years, and I, I said, "You gotta call me in some Xanax." I was like, yeah. "It's that or death." So you know, <laughs> I'd rather it be a benzo. And um, she called me in like a point two five, and then I started taking that like half of that or a quarter. And I was like, I mean, tiny is dose imagine and uh what was really cool about it and i guess is interesting if you made this far in the story and you're interested in all that benzo bullshit um is that my receptors had completely recovered if not maybe better because i was taking like half a point one two five and felt amazing i felt oh my gosh once again overnight I felt clarity and I started going out places slowly and feeling just better and then like I was able to start going to church and stuff and um, I ended up deciding that I didn't it wasn't it only lasted for like an hour or two like I was like okay I I'm sorry so I was taking it so many multiple times a day and um, probably like a total of like a little under 0.5 a day. I was taking every few hours. And I said, you know, I'm going to try Clonopin. I was really scared to try Clonopin. Uh, and I switched. And Clonopin doesn't make you feel as good at all. Um, because it doesn't have the dopamine. But it it definitely brought me back to life. I would be dead if I hadn't got on it. And um, I, I take it pretty much twice a day. Um, you know, 0.5 twice a day. And it, it moved the needle enough to where I have been able to, you know, start doing the therapy work that needs to be done, going to therapy, joining some support groups, um, being able to watch TV, being able to function, being able to focus, being able to write, um, being able to do, just like being a human, um, and I got back on the little neck you know, and, uh, low dose, And then my mood improved, you know, a bit more, and I became more patient and more just, just much closer to the person that I'd like to be. Um, and still a struggle, and uh, a lot of times doing some things, but I couldn't even walk, go to my mailbox. You know, now you know, I'm going to the store and I'm able to do my physical therapies and I'm able to. Just uh, to do things, and I'm working my way up every day, and I don't let myself down. I've got a, I've got a hobby now, a hobby. And some days I just feel so clear and good. I really do, and then, and then I could take on too much, and then I could sort of regress for a little bit, and then some days I feel really, really bad. Um, but in total, in total, I. 10 times better than I was during my worst burnout, and I'm thankful for it, um, I'm thankful I'm able to feed myself now, you know, most of the time, so. anyway, long story, sorry, uh, I should do little short clips about certain things, but anyway, I just wanted to tell you how I'm doing, and, um, I remember being so scared and so lost and obviously I don't want to be on medication but I'm grateful for it at the same time. If you're scared of medications, uh, I understand because I am too and I was. I had to make a decision, everybody has to make that decision for themselves. But I would not count on what I say or what other people say. Um, if you really, really need it, then you need it helps, then that's great. Um, and if it's not medication, there's so many things out there to try. Um, so many things, different things work for different people. I don't plan on being on meds for the rest of my life. If I have to be, then that's fine. If I can have a life and a family and enjoy things. So, anyway, for what it's
it's worth. God bless you guys. Stay safe. Okay, bye.